Hello, and welcome to the Kitty Cat Lane. This is basically going to be a part two or version two of my last video on same face syndrome or cookie cutter characters, but with a shift in focus. Last time, I focused more on humanoid characters and faces, but this time I'll be talking more about furries and animal characters. You don't have to watch the last video to be able to understand and follow along with this one, but I do share some good advice, definitions, and reasoning for why you might be having some trouble with same face syndrome. So you would still benefit from checking it out if you haven't already. So let's just go over some quick, simple, easy exercises and tips you can practice to help with same face syndrome and overall similar character designs in furry characters. First, let's work on practicing some facial features. For my examples here, I'm going to be drawing canine heads and features, but you can do the same with pretty much any animal. Look up some side view dog or animal heads and draw some different snouts you see, or draw as many different ones you can think of. Once you've drawn them, let's practice breaking them down into simple shapes. This will help you better understand what you're drawing as a whole, instead of focusing on all the little things all of the time. Now, do the same thing, but in the reverse order, drawing the shapes first, and then adding the features on over them. This will give you a solid base, while also helping you think outside of the same default formula that you may be falling into for your other drawings. Now you can add a bunch of different ears using one or both of the methods that we just used for the snouts. The next exercise is a bit more challenging, but still pretty fun to play around with. Draw a circle, a square, and a triangle, and try to build a head using only those shapes. You can transform or redraw those shapes in different ways, but make sure they all still look recognizable as that shape. Once you've gotten something you like, you can sketch over it to clean it up and make it look a little more natural in your style. You should already have a bunch of different looking heads by now. By changing the structure of the head, we have altered the skull and the silhouette. However, that's only from one angle. Another exercise to do is to find what makes different animal heads unique from the front view. I like to start with animals that, when I first think of them, I imagine already have pretty similar looks from the front. So I picked a raccoon, a cat, and a dog. I started them all off the same with a circle, eyes, and a simple nose. That's kind of the same basic skull for all of them. Then using shapes, we can figure out, looking at references, what their muscles and fur do to create a different, more defined look for each animal. Using this exercise to notice subtle differences in animals can really help you if you're having trouble making your character look like the animal that you want it to be. For example, when I was first trying to draw out and create my persona, a dragon bunny hybrid, she kept looking off to me. Like the way I drew her proportions and the head shape somehow made her look more like a, a dragon kangaroo hybrid. Sometimes depending on how you draw in your style, you'll just have to do some trial and error work to get what you want. Especially if you're making a hybrid or fantasy creature. Once you're feeling comfortable with your head shapes and features, let's move on to facial expressions. For my demonstration, in the first row, I drew a cat with different expressions. Sometimes we get in the habit of just making the lips slightly upturned or raise the eyebrows and call it a day. But if you really want to portray that character's emotion or personality, even if it's in a resting face, you have to put in a little more effort. The muscles under the skin make a lot of movement as we talk and emote. That means the face is going to get scrunched up if you're angry or frustrated, or stretched out if the character 
is shocked or really excited. When I'm drawing exaggerated faces, I tend to mimic the face that I want to draw, and I feel what my face is doing, and I incorporate how I feel and what my face is doing into what I'm drawing. It also helps to have a mirror for this, or try to recreate faces from emotional moments in your favorite form of visual media. You'll notice lots of different wrinkles from where the face gets scrunched up in different emotions, or even wrinkles where the face stretches in a different way from how it normally is, and pushes out more than you'd expect. After I drew some different cat expressions, I made myself draw expressions on animals that I don't normally draw. I'm not feeling the best about all of them, but that's part of learning. You won't get better at things unless you decide to start working on them. So moving away from faces, let's talk about bodies. With furries and animals, you can really do a lot with their body types to reinforce the animal or animals that they are supposed to be or be inspired by. If this is your fursona, you can make them look however you want to. But if you're making a world where anthropomorphic animals are the main characters and the focus of the story, or if you're making a fantasy world with different fantasy races in it, and some of those races are anthropomorphic animals or inspired by animals, try incorporating certain traits, features, or body types that are associated with the original animal into the proportions and designs of your fantasy race. For example, pigs and alligators can average to be more short and low to the ground, but still be bulky and have long bodies or stretched out torsos. Horses can be tall and muscular. Cats and foxes can be more lean and agile, and the list goes on. Of course, have variations to your animals but if you set a standard, you can follow that rough guideline of what you can expect to see for that type of animal, and what might look a little more unique and different to their kind if you wanted it to stand out more in your world. For these characters, I outlined their bodies to see their body types and get a general idea of what shapes I used for the core of their design. When drawing your characters from scratch, you can start with shapes like these and then build off of them or just have some shapes in mind for what you'd like the body to be like. Another way to build off of your character's core, and this is my preferred method, is to get a placement of the head, spine, ribs or torso, and the hips, but all of that is going to be simplified. So my examples here, I draw a rib cage like shape and basically kind of give the characters an underwear shape on the bottom and this helps me plan where I want everything else to go from there. Sometimes I'll connect the top to the bottom part, but other times that's all I really need. Now that I've practiced all of these things and I have an idea of what I can do to make a new character, I decided to make a fox who looks a little mischievous. She's got a bit of a lankier look to her like a lot of real foxes do, while still having some curves to her that she can use to lure in unsuspecting victims that she can manipulate with her charm and wit. Obviously, the longer you workshop an idea, the more you can develop it and make it stand out. I didn't take much time at all to work on this fox, but if I wanted to come back and develop her character more, then I have a solid idea and place to start. Experiment with your designs, and push the boundaries of your comfort zone with more challenging designs, poses, and ideas. If you enjoyed this video and found some useful tips or exercises out of it, please leave a like or let me know what you thought in the comments. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them. If you would like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing and letting me know what you would be interested in seeing from me in the future. Thank you so much for taking a walk down the kitty cat lane with me and I hope to see you back again soon. And here's the secret kitty of the day. Bye.